somehow the Fae coexist with humans in this universe and how the Light Fae and the Dark Fae also coexist. I wouldn't say the Fae coexist with humans. I would say they kind of use them as a lunch bar or something. <laughs> uh, it's not very fair, is it? No, it's not. Although we do, you know, we do protect the ones that are important to us and if they're, they're bound to a Fae, <laughs> if they're bound to a Fae, then they're spared. Uh, from the lunch menu. <laughs> but, um, yeah, for the most part, the Fae feed off humans, but also we have a, a changing system happening with both bringing uh, humans more into an equal part with the Fae. I think sort of, as far as our story history goes, um, the Light Fae believe in living symbiotically with humanity, whereas the Dark Fae believe in dominating humanity and treating them more like uh, a lunch bar, whereas the Light Fae try to have both societies grow at an equal sort of level so that everybody sort of benefits more. Still all. use us. Though. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but we try to make it enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really the Fae are hidden in our plan is to remain hidden from the humans. So. Now toward the end of season one, we saw the group become more like a team, like more of a team or a family dynamic. Um, will this kind of continue through season two? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they had to, uh, they had to really uh, bribe us to just be in the same room today. <laughs> Ksenia Solo has become so difficult to work with. <laughs> Usually most of us are medicated to be in the same room. <laughs> That's totally not true, obviously. <laughs> but we, you know, we do. We have become a team. But for Bo, I mean, this was an instant family for her. You know, she she met Kenzie and had this instant connection, this instant sisterly connection, and, and all of her her lovers that she's met, <laughs> particularly these two. Um, it's it's been an instant family, and we did become a team. And we kind of noticed it this season. You know, we kind of jumped right back into season two and kind of know when to come in and, and it kind of gels together just like a family would, you know? So it's, it's kind of the same dynamic exists offset as onset. Yeah, it's very much that. <laughs> no, no, I can't <laughs> wait for a joke from Zoe. No, no, no. I'm going, you're right. You're again. We're going to get along again. All of us. We're like the Scooby Doo. Yeah, we're Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. By the way. have a man. <laughs> I just have to tell you that Zoe's one of the funniest people to work with because she has this ability to make the funniest jokes ever and then just pull it all together for the scene. But of course, I can't stop laughing. So, it's a lot of fun. I'm very serious, though. No. It's good to have that balance. Um, there's something that I'm curious about, and I'm sure a lot of the uh, fans here today would like to know. Is there any key vocabulary that we should know, or stuff that you've had to learn and use regularly, or anything that maybe has come into your daily... You should ask Rick. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't any actually, like, full-on fake terminology, like dilithium crystals or anything. <laughs> but, um, but we do have uh, creatures every week. And, uh, and Most of the time, we can't pronounce their names. Yeah, and there's, yeah. during the reading of the episode, we're usually going, and this is pronounced how? <laughs> and then someone will take a stab at it, and somebody else will go, oh, that could, that could that. And eventually, a writer says, no, no, you got to say it like this, and, and we, we do. And, uh, but it's, it's a challenge, actually, to wrap my tongue, anyway, around some of, those, some of those titles, some of those names. And then there's objects that these characters also use. They have... Uh, what was that sword thing that came out of your hand when you used in the pilot? The Syracon. The Syracon. <laughs> you know, like, you see that written down, you go, Syracon. Okay. Right. We did make up a term uh, for a fae that has a baby, a fabi. <laughs> and a vacation. Yeah, there's actually, yeah, there's a lot of human words that can say it, but Kenzie comes up with it, makes them from the fae type of terminology. <laughs> We try to use the word, like we usually pick a creature or something from that comes from a human-based supernatural background or something from a different culture. And we try to use the pronunciation that that culture would use for that creature. Uh, we also, for some of our Fae language, we, we use a mix between um, Irish, so Gaelic, or um, Welsh, kind because of, we have um, a Welsh and an Irish actor on the show, so we sometimes borrow from those languages for some of our language. We had a character called the Lick. 
And that was the time. <laughs> Self-explanatory. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Anna and Ksenia, I have to say, the relationship between Bo and Kenzie is just probably one of the most refreshing on TV right now. I love this whole sense of sisterhood that there's not the cattiness or the rivalry. Yes, you guys challenge each other, but when it comes down to it, she's the little sister you never had. Um, what's it like for an actor to, to portray this strong dynamic, uh, given like, the nature of the world that Lost Girl exists within? Well, <laughs> Kisenia and I, I mean, we get weepy when we talk about our relationships. Really embarrassing. Oh, we're we're trying to get pretty embarrassing. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think, that, I mean, on the show, that was what was so great for Bo is that, you know, she met Kenzie, who's, this, who's human, who saw what she is, saw what she can do, saw that she was this monster in Bo's eyes, and said, okay, you know, that's all right. What else you got, you know? And so instantly, she, she stuck by her no matter what. And I think that's kind of what's so special about their relationship is that, is that they just they just have each other's back, you know? And um, it's, it was an instant family. They're definitely sisters. They definitely argue sometimes, but they would die for each other, absolutely. Which I think is very rare. My grandma used to say, if you can have one, just one true friend in life, you can die happy. And I think that's that's a dream for every person and every girl to have someone that you know would die for you and would do anything. What for is you. your grandma know? <laughs> <laughs> and so we had our screen test center. Oh yeah, we met in the bathroom, yeah. and you know, we just looked at each other under the ugly bathroom lights in yeah. the mirror, and we just thought. That's we didn't like each other in these lights. <laughs> then we're set. We're, yeah. yeah, it's a very, 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 very special relationship. So it's fun. It, it adds so much emotion and depth. And I think Bo and Kenzie, because they have each other, they can kind of go off into this rather scary world and face anything because they know that they have that support. You know, so. Yeah. <laughs> Strangers are friends in that moment. Oh, yeah? yeah? So she wants all of your phones. <laughs> <laughs> they make fun of me because that's something. I'm from New Brunswick and that's something we say. This one's for Casey and also for Ksenia. Hale and Kenzie have a really unique relationship as well. They keep Bo and Mason in check, and they also kind of keep the group in balance. <laughs> what would you say is special about the Kenzie Hale relationship? <laughs> Best friend solidarity till the end. Best friend solidarity, man. Yeah. Um, I don't really consider myself sidekick. Well, then you're out of a job. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, but uh, you know, I think we just really relate to each other. Uh, we we have a lot of fun. I mean, we kind of have, you know, for me. All right, lay it out. Uh, oh yeah, you need to be ready for that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Um, really. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> um, Anna, now that Bo has learned a little bit about who she is, there's still so many unanswered questions, will her journey to continue to seek out more about herself continue? Yeah, I mean, that's something that, that Bo is always going to be searching for. You know, she, she had this big question answered for her at the beginning of first season, but it opened the door to so many other questions. Um, and first season was really about her search for her mother and, and that kind of background. And the second season, um, Bo is definitely smarter this season. She's stronger. She's, she knows that her, her actions have consequences and she wants to protect the people around her. So it's, it's more about protecting the family she has right here than it is about finding her roots. But, you know, there's definitely elements uh, in second season where Bo is still searching. I mean, she's got a lot of questions. 